Hello again, I'm Sam B. Hansen. Today's video is an introduction to the Hammond organ as opposed to the pipe organ, which I featured on a few previous videos. Um, the Hammond is an electric organ invented by Lawrence Hammond and John M. Hannett, and first manufactured in 1935. Um, and it creates sound, um, or at least it used to create sound, um, using electric currents and rotating metal tone wheels, um, as opposed to blowing air through uh, physical pipes, as in the traditional organ. Um, it was originally marketed to churches as an alternative to the pipe organ, um, but has since been used extensively by various jazz, rock and reggae bands, um, particularly throughout the middle of the 20th century. Um, my family were uh, lucky enough to inherit this one, you can see in these photos uh, that come courtesy of my brother, Tristan. Um, we inherited it from my paternal grandmother in 1995. She was an organist um, and I took up the pipe organ in the same year, 95. Um, and it's a real pleasure to play for its own sake, of course, as an instrument in its own right. Um, but I also found it very useful as a, as a practice instrument um, for learning the, the pipe organ. Uh, it's really good to have one in, in the house. Um, you can see here some similarities with the traditional pipe organ. Um, I featured St. Peter's Church, Hammersmith and Wimborne Minster in various previous videos. And you can see similarities here. Um, there, are, there are two manuals, two keyboards, um, each with the, the same compass um, as the pipe organ, the same range of notes, which is five octaves, the standard compass. Um, it's got a pedal board on the floor with a slightly shorter compass than what we'd expect to find on a, a pipe organ. Um, the Hammond here has got two octaves instead of two and a half. Uh, it's got a swell pedal in the middle for adjusting the overall volume. Um, and you can see um, towards the top there these tab stops, these switches that, that, f that flip up and down. Um, some pipe organs, some traditional pipe organs, have tab stops instead of draw stops. Um, the two um, pipe organs that I featured on the channel so far both have draw stops where you pull out different stops and each one control controls a different sound. Um, but there are various instruments uh, around the world that use tab stops inst instead and they do exactly the same job. Uh, they just look and feel a bit different. Um, in the case of the Hammond, the, the tabs um, activate certain preset sounds that come with the instrument. Um, but the main difference I wanted to highlight in this video is the presence of these draw bars a bit lower down and in the middle. Um, each one controls the volume of a specific pitch um, and you pull them out to varying degrees. They're all numbered from one to eight um, to vary the overall sound that you're, you're playing with. And on the two manual that we've got here in this, in this picture, uh, we've got two sets of nine draw bars, one for each manual, and there's a couple in the middle for the pedals as well. Um, and they're all named after the same system of labelling pitch as is used on the traditional pipe organ. So um, the eight foot draw bar, um, which I can pull out here on the, uh, on the Nord Stage 2 EX, sounds at piano pitch, um, exactly the same as if I were to pull out an eight foot stop on a pipe organ and play middle C, I would get middle C with the same note. You see here we've got a, an, a digital representation of a set of draw bars here. There are nine uh, columns of lights which represent each draw bar and I can push them in. I can pull them out using these switches here um, to varying degrees depending on the sound that I want to play with. Um, so eight foot I play middle C, I get middle C, exactly the same. If I halve the length, you see these, they're labelled down here just above the switches, half the length to four foot, it goes up an octave. So if I press the same note, I get uh, the note that's an octave higher. Two foot, halve it again, another octave higher, and one foot over here, an octave higher still. And similarly, go back to eight, there's eight foot again. If I double the length to 16, goes down an octave. I was playing the same note every time there um, and just adjusting the, the pitch with the draw bars that I'm using here. Um, and I can play with these in all kinds of combinations. So there's a little chord, C major, 
add a bit of four, a bit of two, a bit of one, maybe a bit of 16 down here. I needn't necessarily use them sequentially. So I could use just eight and two, which has a particular quality about it. I could use eight and one. So the two notes you can hear there are three octaves apart. I could even use 16 and one. Could use a bit less 16. And anything in between that I feel like whatever takes my fancy. Um, the other ones, you see most of these are coloured black rather than, than grey, have got fractions next to them. Um, in the, in, in the, the context of the pipe organ, we call these mutations. These are notes that when I play a C, I get a note other than C, which might sound like madness, um, but there's a, there's a reason for that. Um, so there's eight foot, there's a four foot, two and two thirds, I'm still playing C, but that note is G. That's the note, the G just above the C that I had when I played with the four foot. Two foot is C again. One and three fifths is the E just above that. One and a third, the G just above that. And there's one again, the final C there on the top. If I go back to eight, I'm gonna add a bit of two and two thirds. I'll be able to hear the G coming in on the top and you can hear the two notes C and G. If I were to play that as two notes on an eight foot drawbar, it'd be those two notes there, C and the G, an octave and a half above. I'll put it out here again. As soon as I start playing with it, however, it just takes on a quality of its own, a sound quality of its own and the, the brain, the ears kind of join them together into a single sound. There's eight and four. There's a bit of two and two thirds, so I could add a bit of... That's nice. All kinds of combinations that I can play with there. Um, with the with the draw bars. We've got some other effects here as well. Let's go back to eight for the moment. Um, the percussion section here, there's the eight foot sound again. Um, another way of, of, of thinking of the eight foot sound here is the fundamental pitch, the, the original pitch, if you like. Um, and the other draw bars have been selected according to the harmonic series. Um, the naturally occurring harmonics um, of a particular sound. Um, so the fundamental could also be called the first harmonic, the forefoot is the second harmonic, two and two thirds is the, is the third, various others on the way up. The percussion section here, if I turn it on, we get a, a short burst of second harmonic, just the fourth, the, the forefoot drawbar on the top. I'll turn it off again, here it is. off, on, you might be able to hear that. You can also choose harmonic third, which is the two and two thirds sound. It just, it's, it's there for a bit and then it decays. Just fun for kind of staccato playing and wild crazy rock solos over the top. Um, we've also got um, over here, this is the rotary speaker section, um, an emulation of the Leslie speaker. Um, this was invented by Donald Le Leslie, Donald Leslie. In the late 1930s, he was looking to produce a speaker to complement uh, the Hammond organ. And what he did was to build a big cabinet. And you see a picture of one here. We've got one attached to the real Hammond here um, that modifies the sound by rotating a drum in front of the loudspeakers. So if I switch it off, play a chord, that's quite a flat sound. If I now switch it on, maybe you can hear a slight, a gently undulating sound, like a slow rotation. I can speed it up. I can slow it down again. 
I'll just add a bit more sound so you can hear that more clearly. So it's on slow, fast. They've done a great job with the emulation here because you might notice when I when I go from fast to slow, it slows down. It doesn't just go straight back to hear it gradually slowing down which is exactly what it would do in real life. Um, we've got a few other things here as well there's vibrato and chorus up here or various kinds that I can play with. Um, it's also um, whoops you can also drive the Leslie speaker a bit. Hours of fun. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is just improvise for a little bit um, to show off some of these features. Um, I've split the keyboard, you might be able to see this green light here, I'm not quite sure. Split the keyboard here to emulate having two manuals. So I've got one sound down here, another sound at the top, and I can switch between their various settings using these two switches, these two buttons in the middle. Um, and you'll see that, you'll see me fiddling with various settings as we go. Um, so here we are, the Hammond organ. Enjoy.
Thanks very much for watching today. Hope you've enjoyed that. Um, my next video will be in two weeks time um, on Friday the 30th of April 2021. Um, and in that I'll be playing a few shorter piano pieces written by both my partner, Riona Sachs, and myself. And two weeks after that, on Friday the 14th of May, I'll be giving an introduction to the Kitar, which has already featured briefly on the channel in video 14, um, in which I gave an outdoor early morning performance of one of the tracks from my synth jazz album, The Atmosphere Suite, which is on Spotify um, and also uh, available on CD through the website samhanson.co.uk. I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, but that's it for now. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.